sit on something, but you'll find as you sit cross-legged, we tend to always sit with the same leg in front of the other. So just change that. Draw your buttocks flesh back onto the support so that you feel or away from the support more so that you feel your sitting bones facing directly down onto whatever it is that you're sitting on. Bring your hands onto your knees and just take a moment to get a, a good lift to your spine from the base, vertebra by vertebra, lifting up. If you're feeling any tightness in the groin here, in the, in the groin, and your knees aren't releasing, take more height. So you can sit on two or three blankets or phones. Just take a moment to allow your groin, groins to soften and settle. Take your hands onto the knees and gently press your knees towards each other. So they come closer towards each other. Move your shins further away from, from yourself. And again, lift up. And feel the base really settling into this position, Shrastikasan. And then from there, let the sides of the waist lift. Hold onto your knees and let your chest lift. So I'll do from the side just to really exaggerate this action. The bottom ribs, you want them to move forward and up, lifting your chest, gently pulling on your knees so your collarbones broadly move away from each other. Exaggerating this opening that we're needing to the front of the chest and the lift to the body, to the back of the body, the sides of the body, and the front of the body. See if you can maintain that lift and bring your hands together in the prayer position and gently close your eyes. Release any tension on your face and allow the skin to soften. Softening from the center line of your face outwards. Soften around the cheekbones. and the corners of your mouth. Let the jaw gently release the lower jaw away from the upper jaw. Become aware of your breath. Only breathing in and out the nostrils, just observe that natural course that the breath moves along. And let's start with the three ohm sounds. So empty your lungs completely. Inhale. Oh. Oh. Stay in this position with your eyes closed. <clears throat> I'll start with open with the invocation to Patanjali. If you don't know, just remain seated with your eyes closed with a deep, deep sense of gratitude for yoga, this gift that we're given and, and where it comes from. Yogena chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya chavai jakena yopakurutam pravaram muninam 
Release your head to your heart. Just have a moment to make your own inner acknowledgement. Slowly open your eyes to look to your fingertips. Keep your head bowed down, but release your hands so that the palms face up and they just rest on the top of the knees. Gently draw your navel area back towards your spine, up towards your chest, lift your chest and raise your head. You'll need a strap and you can stay sitting on the support. Just going to extend our legs in front of us about hip width apart. Have the strap handy. I'll demonstrate from the side as to the shape of the body. We'll use the strap to put around the balls of the feet. So just below the toes. Keep your feet hip width apart. So here it's very easy to extend forward and you can see the rounding of the back. So we really want to rather make it more space on the strap and lift your chest, straighten your back, press the back of your legs down, lift the sternum. Keep your eyes soft, gently opening the back of your legs as you press them down to the floor. But just remember anybody with hyperextension, if you feel that your, or if you see it, and that your heels are lifting off the floor, then you need to place a rolled blanket or something under the back of your knees. So the heels must stay pinned down onto the floor. Feel that the bottom ribs, the back bottom ribs, those move in and up. Lift your chest even more. The collarbones are broadly moving away from each other. So the chest is not collapsing. It's lifting, it's opening, opening up the heart space and the Hatha Chakra, the heart chakra. Breathing. Walk your hands a little bit further along the strap. Some of you may have the capacity to hold onto your feet. That's fine, but still keeping that lift to the front body. The bottom back ribs moving in and up. And then bring your hands all the way back. Press down onto your fingers. Your fingers pointing forward, elbows back, lift your chest. You can stand on the mat, just move the support forth. Stand in the middle of the mat, ankle bones to touch, stand completely upright. Roll your shoulders back, extend into your fingers. So use this, Tadasana is often used as a metaphor for finding your center, finding the midline all the way up from the base, running all the way up to the top of your head. Bring your fingertips together. Inhale, either jump or step your feet apart. Extend into your fingers. Press the outer edges of your feet down. Keep lifting the front of your body. As you're really seated now, keep lifting your chest, lifting the front of the body. Turn your right foot out to 90 degrees and your back foot in. Without dropping the hip, keep the hips level. Keep your chest facing to the front. And now inhale and exhale, extend over to your right, taking your hand onto the shin and extending up into the left fingers. So before you look up, 
Keep looking forward, hold firmly onto the shin. And now revolve the chest up towards the ceiling. Revolve and lengthen from your right hip towards your right armpit. So if you seem to arch it, lengthen and flatten. Some of you may take your hand to the floor, that's fine. As long as you're lengthening and flattening the underside, revolving the upper side up to the ceiling. Turn your head if you can to look up. And if it catches in your neck, just keep looking forward and breathe evenly. So this is Ortita Trikonasana Triangle. It's a beautiful opening to the legs, to the hips, the side body, the back body. Look forward and inhale, come up. Exhale, turn your feet to the front. Keep your chest lifted and open. Turn your, right, your left foot out and your back foot in. Extend into your fingers. Inhale and exhale. Go all the way over to your left. And again, hold on to that leg. If you feel, if anybody's wobbling or anything, just take the other hand onto your hip. Press onto the big toe of that left foot, but lift the inner arch of that foot. Just look down at that foot for a moment. See that you're not rolling onto the outer edge of that foot, but the inner arch is lifting. And now revolve your chest. Lengthen the underside of the ribcage towards that left armpit, armpit. Revolve even more and then turn your head to look up. So if you can see your right thumb, keep breathing. Look forward and inhale, come up with straight arms, exhale, turn your feet to the front. Either jump or step together. And release your hands to the sides. And again, back to that center, to the midline. Find that center. Feel that you're not leaning too far forward onto your toe side. You may need to take the weight back to your heels. Front ribs back. So for this one, some of us may need a block or a chair. If you have blocks, you can put them to the back edge. I'll demonstrate with the chair. Okay, wait, let's go to your right. I'm putting the mirror in it, but just to your right. So the chair will be there. Your mat will be a little bit further forward. I've got the wall in the way. But feet apart, just, just watch for a moment. The right, the right foot will go all the way out, your back foot goes in as we've done. But then from here, just making a right angle. Don't go too far forward with that knee. Want it above that ankle. Pull back on that elbow. Take your arms out to the sides. And then we're going to go over. So some of us may need the chair like this. We'll take the hand to the hip as we revolve. Again, turning the, the chest, revolving. And then the arm will come up and over. So some of you who can go lower, you can take the bottom rung of the chair or your hand to the floor or the block. So just see whatever you've got there at home. If you have blocks, they can go behind you. And then come to the center of the mat. Jump when you're ready. Turn your right foot out to 90 degrees and your back foot in. So bring, allow that hip to turn, but now face your chest forward. Turn your hips to face the front now. They level. Lift your chest. Inhale. And exhale, make a right angle with that front bent leg, your right leg. Keep your arms out to the sides for now. And just pause here. Take your left hand to your hip. Inhale. And exhale, take your hand onto the seat of the chair or the block. Some of you may have your hand to the floor. Press down onto whatever support you're using. Press down with that right hand and now revolve your chest. Revolve it, open it. Take that left side of the ribcage and revolve it up to the ceiling. Don't take your hand up yet. Press down onto the outer edge of your left foot. 
Straighten that left leg. Just looking forward for now. And now extend down into the left hand, turn the palm up, bend that elbow towards your ear and straighten it up and overhead. Revolve your chest even more. Take your head back. See if you can look up. Breathing. Take your hand forward. Bring it all the way back. Come back up into this warrior position. And inhale, come up. Exhale, turn your feet to the front. Just release your hands to your hips. Elbows back, lift your chest. So move your props. If you have a chair or something, move it to the other side. Keep your legs nice and wide and the outer edges of your feet. Press down into those now. Elbows back. Lift your chest. Turn your left foot all the way out and your back foot in, but keep your chest and your hips facing forward. Arms out, inhale, and exhale, make a right angle. Press into the outer edge of that back foot. Lift your chest. So as we started, feel that the bottom back ribs are moving in and up. Inhale. And exhale, take your hand to the block of the chair and the other hand onto your hip. So pause here. Press down onto the chair or the block and again, revolve your chest. Now taking the right side of the ribcage and revolving it up to the ceiling. Take your head back. So you want your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Straighten that back leg. Take the Right arm and extend down into your fingers, turn your palm up, bend that elbow. So bend that elbow so you bring your hand next to your ear, inhale, and then exhale, extend it straight over, stretch into the fingers, straighten that arm. Pressing down onto your support, see if you can revolve your chest even more. Look up towards the ceiling. Keep pressing down onto that front foot as if you're trying to push it forward. If you can drop down a little bit more with that hip and then take the arm forward and all the way up, come up into warrior two. Keep breathing. Straighten both legs, turn your feet to the front. Either jump or step together. And again, stand again, find your center, be upright. Soften your eyes as you catch your breath. Take whatever you've got on your mat, just move it off. Your mat is free. Come to the front edge of your mat. And again, stand upright. So standing in Tadasan or Samastiti is the other name where there's an evenness. Find again your center. Bend your legs, take your hands to the floor, spread your fingers, and then step back with your right leg. Just pause here in this high lunge position. Spread your fingers even more. Hands are apart, and I'll take the other foot back. Feet apart, hip width apart. Lift your heels. So we're coming into downward dog, Adhumukh Shanasan. Heels are off the ground. Keep your neck in line with the rest of the spine now by bringing your ears in line with your upper arms. When you're looking down to the mat, you're still lifting your heels. Reach up into your sitting bones as you move your chest closer towards the thighs. And now slowly take your heel back and down towards the floor. If they don't connect with the floor, it's fine. Keep straightening your legs. And now relax and soften your neck so that the top of your head 
just facing down to the floor. There's no tension in your neck. Keep your eyes open. Keep straightening your arms, straightening your legs. See if you can lift your sitting bones a little bit higher up towards the ceiling. And then come forward onto your knees, take your knees apart, big toes to touch, and lean back so that your buttocks and heels connect, bend your arms, and just rest your head onto your folded arms. And just remember, you can keep your head down, but throughout the practice, if you need to rest, you can come into this position at any time. And just remember, at all times, ahimsa, non-violence, so that's no violence to yourself in this, in this practice. Slowly sit up, bring your knees together. What we'll need now is, if you've got a chair handy, we'll have the chair. You can also use the wall. It's a little bit more tricky with the, the wall. But cover the top of the chair with a blanket or a towel, like that. So that's not for everybody, that's quite a high height. Some of you may use the seat of the, the chair. If that's not, um, if it's too low, you can add on. You can add on blank blankets or towels or whatever you want, but we'll need a strap. So if you don't have the, um, the chair, you can just use a bit of wall space. we will be using it like that. I'll just give you a moment to get your props. If you are using the back of the chair with the blanket, you need to be able to straighten both legs. I'll show you from this side. Kaz, we can't see the chair. Oh dear, thank you. Just go like that. Is that okay? Little bit more, tiny bit more, tiny bit more. Like that. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. So, so the chair, yeah, this is a very high height, so it's not for everybody. And I just want to show you, if you are using the back of the chair, what happens as this hip lifts up, you need to be able to draw it down. So just check in. If you can't rather use the seat of the chair, maybe you've got a window ledge nearby or something else, a table that's a bit lower, or you're going to build up the height on the, the seat of the chair. So just take a moment, find what's going to work for you and have your right leg lifted. If you're feeling a bit wobbly for whatever reason, have a wall next to you that you can just put your arm onto to, just to hold yourself. Okay, so the right leg is lifted up onto the support. Back leg is completely straight. Check and just look to the side that the left leg that you're standing on, see that the heel is below the hip. Sometimes that leg, that foot um, is too far back. So shuffle forward. Again, put the strap onto the ball of your foot. So as we started earlier, when we had our arms straight, we were still able to lift our chest without rounding the back. And now press with the ball of the foot into the strap. and pull on the strap. So as you pull on the strap, allow for a lift in the spine, even more lift in the spine and lift in the chest without bunching your shoulders. Release your shoulders down away from the ears. Your outer right hip must move down. So in this position, it tends to want to rise up. Release the outer right hip down. So this is Utita Hasta Parangustasan. Slowly walk your hands forward. So some of you may put your hands onto the foot, but otherwise just walk your hands a little bit further forward and then lift your chest again. So again, still focusing on the straight back. Take both pieces of the strap now into your left hand, almost you may be holding that foot, that's fine. Take the right hand onto your hip, lift your chest, 
And now slowly turn away from that leg. So turn to your right, keep lifting your chest. Keep allowing that outer right hip to move down to the floor. Left leg is straight, that left front thigh is pressing back. If you can, now take your right hand and line with your right shoulder, extend into the fingers, arms are st arms straight, palm facing down, look over the fingers, keep breathing and lifting your chest. And then bring your hand back to the front, hold onto the strap, lift your chest again. Walk your hands a little bit closer now, as close as you can to that foot, lift your chest again. And then release the strap, release the leg. Sorry, we've got a little friend in the, the yoga room, one of the little rescue birds has come in. It's, you'll hear the sound effects. Place your support, the prop pull, whatever you're using, wall or chair again, and change legs. So now your left leg is lifted. Again, the outer left hip must move down. Hold onto the strap, keep straightening the, the right leg. Keep lifting your chest. Very nice. Walk your hands a little bit closer along the strap. Lift your chest again. And you may notice that that left hip wants to lift as you go forward. Release the outer left hip down. And now take both bits of the strap into your right hand. Left hand to the hip. Keep releasing that outer left hip down to the floor. Lift your chest. Inhale and exhale. Turn from the waist and in the chest. Look over your left shoulder. Find your balance here. Keep lifting your chest. And then take that left arm out in line with your shoulder. Palm facing down. The right front thigh on that leg is pressing back, straighten that leg. See so if you can look over your left fingertips. But keep your eyes soft and breathe. And then bring your hands back to the strap. Hold onto the strap again and lift your chest. Walk your hands a little bit closer towards that foot. Lift your chest again. And keep allowing that left outer hip to descend down to the floor. And then slowly release the strap, release that leg. Stand one more time in Tadasana, standing upright, shoulders back. Front ribs back, abdomen broadly spreading back. Chin parallel to the floor, just keep your eyes soft and breathe. So now you can take the chair away from you. Keep the strap nearby. So I'm going to come a little bit closer just to demonstrate what we're doing with the fingers. So a bit like chameleon hands, you've got your thumb and the first two fingers. So if you can just get that movement, it's like that. So the thumb and the first two fingers are going to, they're going to be your little claw sort of things. Okay, thumb, first two fingers, and then your feet apart, at least hip width apart. You see my feet there? Bend your legs and then take off the two fingers and put them underneath your big toes. 
So they're hooked underneath the big toes, and then the thumbs can join them. I'll see if I can get in that close and show you. So it's like that underneath and then there. Okay, so you've got that. Keep your legs bent. Keep your legs bent and now look forward. So the chest is moving forward. You can have your, your ribs onto the, the thighs, so bend that much. Keep lengthening the front of your body, moving the sternum forward. And then slowly straighten your legs. So we may not all straighten our legs, just straighten to where you get to without rounding your back. Keep looking forward. So now if you have managed to straighten your legs, widen your elbows, Lengthen the front of your body and take your head down. Release your neck. Release the top of the head down to the floor. Do the same thing even if your legs are still bent now. Widen your elbows. You're pulling on that big toe, moving your elbows away from each other to broadly open your chest, to open the collarbones away from each other. And then releasing the top of the head down towards the floor. Keep your eyes open. So Tada and Gusta Sans, it's a, the big toe of the foot is held and we're gently pulling on it to draw ourselves down, lengthening the front of the body down, the sides of the body and broadly opening the back body. Bend your knees again, look forward. Let's take your hands onto your hips and inhale, come all the way up, straighten your legs, release your hands. So now this next one, I'll show you from the side. Your feet are still going to be apart and we take our hands and we place them right under the foot. So you go to that the toes are, are touching the wrist, so you really need to bend your legs again, placing your hands underneath your feet. See if you can get down so low that your toes are touching the wrists. And stay with bent legs. Feet hip width apart. Just check that you haven't turned your feet out. So if your feet, the outer edges of your feet are parallel to each other, then your knees are facing forward which is what we want. Look forward now, see if you can bend even more. Lengthening the front of your body. Keep looking forward, start to straighten your legs, feel the front of the body lengthening, widen your elbows and release your head down. Neck is soft, top of the head facing down to the floor. your eyes open but soft and breathe. So Hasta Padasana, this is the hand, Hasta is the hand, Pada is the foot. See if you can widen your elbows by drawing yourself down. Don't worry if your legs aren't straight. Remember Ahimsa, just go to your personal maximum, use your breath, to soften and release the exhalation, allow to soften and release any tightness. And then raise your head, bend your knees again, release your hands. Put them flat onto the floor, keep your legs bent, completely flat on the floor. And now take your hands to your hips, look forward, inhale, come up, lift your chest and release your hands to the sides. If you are practicing the head balance, Salamba Shesha San, 
go into that if you if you if it's a norm, normally part of your practice. Otherwise, we're going to all do um, prasarita padottanasana, which is the the widespread pose. You will need head support. So for those of you who know, just get your head support ready. If you're not familiar with this pose, take your feet apart. I'll just demonstrate that you will need some form of head support. Rather have more. Even if it's piled up this high, we will use the back edge of the mat. So this is what it is. It's going into this position, moving the hands back and letting the head connect some, something. So if, you, if you're practicing normally, go into it. And if it's the first time or you haven't done this often, I'll walk, walk you through it. Just get your head support. Take your feet to the very back edge of your mat. See that your feet are parallel to each other and then take your hands to your hips. Elbows back. Your legs are completely straight. Um, you see, you can go a little bit wider with your legs. That's it. Press down into the outer edges of your feet. Inhale, lift your chest and look up. And as you exhale, come forward, bring your hands onto the floor or onto the support and look forward. So again, creating the length to the front of your body. So in this position, we want the upper back to gently move down towards the chest. So we're creating a more concave upper back. Shoulders back. Length to the front of your body. So the navel moves forward, the sternum moves forward. Really lengthening and opening the torso. Keep that, move your hands back, look forward. Hands moving further back. Your fingers are still pointing forward. And now slowly look forward, take your chest down and then your head last. Top of the head onto the support. So here's where you may need to take away some foams or some blankets or whatever you've got, but you want the top of your head to touch Connect with the support. You could also use a chair. A chair works very well. You can put a chair with a blanket or a towel on it. Thanks, Phil. And check in that the weight between your feet, your hands, and your head are more evenly distributed. We don't want more weight on your head. So if you feel that you're putting more weight on your head, move your weight towards your heel side. And for those in the head balance, just remember to, you can actually use your middle finger to steer or help yourself balance. So that's a, it's a nice way just to feel if you're leaning too much onto one side, you use your middle fingers to help steer. Press down into the forearms, lift the upper arms, lift the shoulders, and then bring about that compaction around the hips, around the buttocks. And then from there, that tightening around the the entire pelvic girdle from there you're able to lift up lengthening through the inner groin the inner legs all the way up to the inner ankles draw your toes towards you for those in the head balance and lift your heels higher open the back of your legs keep the buttocks and the hips tightening towards the center and now maintain your legs at, in that way, in that working way, that tightening way and lifting way. And then just lift the balls of your feet a little bit higher. Keep your legs working in that way. So as if somebody's lifting you up by your ankles, but your feet are soft. And for those of you in that widespread prasarita pose, sometimes it's, not, it's, I mean, it's always good to have a long hold, but sometimes if you 
feel that you just want to come up, you just bring your hands forward to below your shoulders again and you look forward, create the length to the front of your body again, and then take your head down one more time. So really lengthen the front of your body. And then the widespread pose, the inner thighs are moving back. And the buttocks flesh is as if it's lifting up and over like a, a waterfall coming over the back to the lower back. Okay, if you're in the head balance, you can start to come down. And for those of you in the widespread pose, just look forward and bring your hands below your shoulders. Create that length to the front of your body again. Try not to come out of this pose with a rounded back because then you undo this, this lovely opening that we're getting. You can take your hands to your hips, lift your chest, and heel toe in here until you're ready to step your feet together. If you're in the head balance, just if you've come down from that, just keep your head down and go into Adamukha Virasan. In fact, let's all go into Adamukha Virasan. Just take your knees apart, point your toes back. Bend your elbows and release your head down. And now straighten your hand, your arms, spread your fingers, keep your arms straight, and move the upper arms, the forearms, into the shoulders. And if you're drawing them into the shoulders, so the trapezius muscle, that's that sort of triangular muscle. The back of the neck moves down, down the back, drawing your shoulders down the back, releasing any tension in your neck. And then slowly come sit all the way up. For those practicing the shoulder balance, the lumbar sabanga sun, you can go into that if it's what you normally practice and you've got some supports. Remember, there must be some support under your shoulders so that your neck is free. And then if you're not practicing that, get whatever blankets or foams. We, we need to make a bit of height with whatever you've got there. So you could have three foams or four foams if you've got, or you could take some blankets or towels to achieve the same position. Something like that, which is nice and dense and heavy. So get the, the support into the middle of the mat. We're going to move along the length of the mat. And then sit on the support. If there are blankets, don't take too much height. You don't want to wobble off. It will be a little bit lower. Lean back. Take your hands behind you. Your feet are on the floor. Keep your legs bent. Lift your pelvis and you move your buttocks forward so that the sacrum is on the support. And then from there, you can lie back. Get the shoulders, the top of the shoulders onto the floor. Keep your legs bent and just have your hands out to the sides. Palms facing up. Okay, so you've got the support just under your sacrum. Your legs are bent. For those of you in Seta Bandha with the support under the, the sacrum, that's the bridge pose, turn your toes in slightly, your heels out a little. Just helps to open and open the sacrum area. If you feel the support touching or cutting into your lower back, you need to move um, a little bit away from the support so that this, the support only ends up under the sacrum. And those in Seto Banda, this bridge one was under of the support under the sacrum. If you would like, you can start to straighten your legs, but if you feel any pain in your lower back, keep your legs bent. 
Otherwise, you straighten your legs onto the floor. If you've got blocks to put your feet onto, that's great. And if you are doing, or hopefully we're all doing a bit of self-practice at home, if, there are, if there's anything like this that you're needing to make do with home supports or props, just um, send me a picture or some videos and we can figure, figure out how to do this. And then for those of you who are in the shoulder balance, the same sort of effect as that head balance. We really are focusing on this compaction around the hips and the buttocks. So imagine you've got this belt tightly around the outer hips. In fact, around the lower buttock area and the upper buttock area, two belts tightening. And then another one around your thighs, tightening. So your legs, inner lining of the legs are pressing together. And do that same thing now for those in the shoulder balance, lift your heels higher. Open the back of your legs, press your legs together. So keep your legs like that. You may find now you can move your hands along your back to press your chest, your back of your body towards your chest and your chest closer to your chin. You'll get more of a lift and then release the feet so that the balls of the feet become higher again. Keep that compaction. So if you're in the Seto Banda, that bridge one, and you have got your legs bent, see that your, your feet aren't too close to the foams. You want at least your heels below your knees. So your legs can be bent, but your heels can be below your knees. And in that bridge pose, the inner thighs are moving down to the floor. Your kneecaps are facing up, if, especially if you straighten your legs. Make sure your kneecaps are facing up but any strain on your back, just bend your legs. They don't have to um, be straightened all the way. You can bend them a little or bring your feet below your, your knees. And those in shoulder balance, you can do some variations there. If you want, you can put your feet together in Baddha Konasan. And when you release your feet into Baddha Konasan, feel that the whole pose doesn't melt down towards the prop. Press gently into your feet so that the hips are still working. Find that even connection between the heel of the foot. Let's see if we can get each of the toes to touch. And those in the, sh in the uh, bridge, Seto Banda, sometimes the chest tends to collapse towards the back body. See if you can tuck your shoulders under a little bit more. And the thoracic spine, that's the upper part of the back, that needs to move in and up into your chest. The chest must stay open. That's giving that, that from the side view, it's that rounded sort of bridge pose, arching back, lifting your chest. And this is really great, a great um, position to get into if you have um, any sort of sciatic um, nerve pains or a stiff back. Um, also for your hips, it really helps to keep your hips level. And then you just stay here, you hold and breathe and it, it really works miracles. So at home, if you are able to try and figure out something that you could Eventually, when you straighten your legs, put your heels onto like two bricks that you could have at the wall. You can, I've even heard of people actually taking bricks from the garden and they cover it with something that work very well. Um, otherwise, wooden bricks. Or you may have a small little bench or 
stack of old telephone directories or books or something, something that you can put your heels onto. So maybe a bit of homework just to play with that and figure that out for this particular pose. So if you've been in the shoulder balance, you can straighten your legs if you are in any of the variations and bring your feet over into Halasan. So bring them over towards the floor. Also for this, um, for some of you taking them over to the floor maybe a bit too much and you can also figure it out that your feet go onto the couch behind you or onto a chair. And those of you who have been in the bridge pose now, bend your legs. Press down into your feet and now lift your pelvis off the support. Don't turn your hips or anything, just lift your pelvis. Tighten around the buttocks so that the buttocks can lift away and hold it there. Feel how amazing that the gluteus maximus, all the buttocks muscles, how they hold you, how they support you, how they work in the, in, with the back. Keep it lifted now, keep your pelvis lifted. Slowly take the supports out, but keep the pelvis lifted. Don't turn at all. Take all the supports out. Keep holding. And then slowly lower your lower back down, vertebra by vertebra, lengthening the bottom of the spine, the lumbar and the tailbone away from you. And just pause in that position when you get your back flat. You can just take your feet a little bit wider apart and let your knees touch each other. And then those who have been in um, the shoulder balance in Halasan, just bend your legs and roll off the support. And if you're in the shoulder balance, just move a little bit so that you can slide off the support so that your head and shoulders come off the support. And the rest of us just keep our legs bent, knees gently touching. You can put your hands onto your lower abdomen. So for Shavasan, Shavasana, um, we want to make sure that we're warm enough. So just roll over to your right when you're ready. Come sit up and prepare your mat so that you have something under the back of your head, a blanket or a towel that's folded. So that is at least the minimum that we need. You can take something to cover your eyes, a scarf or if you've got eye cover or something. And then for your back, remember that the, if you put your calves onto the back of the chair, when you lie down, the calves rest on the back of the chair, that is a great release to the lower back. So you've got that option. Or take a cushion or a bolster and put it underneath the back of your legs as you lie down. And just check your alignment when you're lying down. So you really reap the benefits of the practice now. So don't just flop down, see that you're lying down straight, keep your legs bent. Put your head onto the support and bring that head support right to the top of your shoulders. So the entire head and neck is supported. Chin moves down towards your chest. You can cover yourself with a blanket if you like. And then when you're ready, you can extend your legs over the support or if you're lying flat, just extend your legs and allow everybody, allow the feet to roll out to the sides. Big toes towards the little toe side. Let your palms face up. You can walk the back of your arms away from you. Palms are facing up and allow your fingers to soften and curl even. If you've got eye cover, you can put it on and close your eyes. So Mr. B.K. Sayenga often said that this was one of the hardest of the asana um, to master because it really is, we can get ourselves into all these shapes and things, but here's when we need to let go now of the body. The body's done the work. 
and it's the mind that we need to quieten. So to help this, just see how the skin, which is the largest organ of the body, becomes soft and sensitive after all the stretching and moving with the muscles and the bones. We are now able to relax and move inwards away from the skin. Slowly drawing our senses inwards. Release any tension around your eyes, it, allowing your eyes to relax away from the eyelids. Sinking deep in towards the back of your head. And with that, allow your tongue to rest away from the front teeth and soften and broaden into the lower palate of the jaw. And let the jaw just gently unhinge from the upper jaw. So there's no tension in this area. Allow the throat to be soft. The inner walls of the throat to soften and broaden. And then invite the outer ears to soften and coil inwards towards the inner ears, drawing the, the sense of sound inwards. And just become aware now of your breath this life force. And if your mind wanders, bring your mind back to the breath as it gently guides and draws you to this inner space where this life force originates within yourself. And safe in this inner sanctuary, allow yourself to let go.
So bring your attention to your heart center or heart chakra. And imagine this beautiful green orb of light. Allow your breath to slowly start to lengthen and deepen. And as you do so, allowing this beautiful green orb of light and love emanating, rising and expanding from your heart center. Let your thumb touch each fingertip gently, feeling that mind and body awareness together. And then bring your hands onto your lower abdomen. Bend your knees and roll over to your right. You can take your right arm up and overhead to roll onto. So your head rests on your right arm. Just pause there for a moment to allow your eyes to open and slowly focus. I'll just read something to you. Um, the yogis made the discovery that our essence is not body and mind, but is really spirit. And they set out to discover the nature of the spirit. I'm just going to skip some of it. It goes on to say, it is the highest power conceivable, beyond all opposites, beyond time and space, and is the source of all creation. It is fire, sun, moon, and stars. It is the air and the sea. It is this boy, that girl, this man, that woman, this old man. Its face is everywhere. It is the blue bird, the green bird, the thunder cloud, the seasons and the seas. It has no beginning and no end. It is the creator, the source from which the worlds evolve and its face is everywhere. The magic of name and form of you and me, casting the spell of pain and pleasure, all come from Maya, its divine power. It is only when we are able to see through this magic veil that we can see the one who appears as many. Use your left hand to press down onto the floor and bring your head up last as you come sit up. Sit on something so your spine is lifted. So there's a free flow of energy. Bring your hands again into the prayer position, Namaskarasan. And just release your head to your heart as you allow your heart to rise up and open. And have a moment here to yourself. And let's take with us today a deep sense of peace, love, and gratitude. Keep this close to you. Thank you, everybody. Namaste. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here.